Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews is toward the end of the New Testament. And verses 1 through 7, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God, so the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because that God had translated him, uh, for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, preparing an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Let's pray. Father, the word is wonderful, and we thank you for it, and we pray that the Spirit of God would just move in our midst. Lord, I pray that I would have your words, your mind, your illustrations, <clears throat> that uh, I would see what you want me to say and hear from you, that we would all hear from you, that uh, the Holy Spirit would be in charge, and the word would be powerful, Lord, and uh, that we would uh, come to know you as Savior if we don't know you, that we'd come to live more by faith, Lord. We're not good at this faith thing. So please help us and uh, impact every life, Lord, and do a great work, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Noah, uh, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear and repaired an ark. One of the things we forget is that it had not rained uh, up till Noah's day. The world was... Uh, we believe shrouded by a, uh, a a water shroud around the world, and that the dew would come out every day, and that God would just water uh, all the plants and things like that. Rain hadn't started, and uh, and uh, God had not uh, it was not doing the world that way at the time, and it never rained. Again, uh, Seattle was not invented yet, and uh, the world was totally different, and and uh, and and so uh, can you imagine? It's hard. To, it's hard to comprehend. If we could just, if we try to take ourselves out of our world and, and <clears throat> what we know and, and imagine something happening we've never conceived of before. And uh, God just said, okay, I'm going to plant plants and out of the sky, plants are going to come down and stick in the ground. And you had to go tell everybody this is going to happen. You know what? Everybody, don't worry. Every plant in the world's dead, but God is going to make plants come down from the world and stab into the ground and they'll start growing. And uh, so we need to prepare uh, uh, open areas for this and all these things because it's going to happen. Can you imagine everybody thinking you're nuts? Because it, it had never rained. And so floods had never happened and all these things. The whole world is completely different than it is now and laid out differently. And I believe the mountains weren't like they are and everything everything was different. And, and, uh, and, and, and Noah's as telling them that this God told me that the world's going to flood. And it's going to rain and the and also it says, by the way, it didn't just rain in, in Noah's day. It says the floods under, in, in, underneath the earth, the, the deep waters underneath opened up and, and came out from inside the earth, all the water inside the earth. And it was, it was different and laid out differently. And maybe God had the, you know, I mean, obviously it was a miracle and things were completely different. Maybe the, a lot of the water was right near the surface underneath that just would come up every day. And we don't know, but there, right, even right now there's a lot of subterranean waters and lakes and seas. and all, There's a lot of water even still. But uh, God flooded the world in, in, through, from below and above, and, and Noah told everybody, for 100 years this is going to happen, and he built an ark. But it, it was something he'd never seen before. And Hebrews 11, 1, our memory verse says, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is things not seen. <laughs> we don't live by faith much in America. We don't need to live by faith, we think. We, we kind of are so blessed. You know, most of you cannot imagine <clears throat> uh, being in a land where there's not plenty. Like, honestly, like, really, if somebody really was starving, uh, uh, like you see the guy standing on the side of the road holding a sign, the guy, you're looking at him, he's not starving, right? And, 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 but if you saw somebody skinning bones hanging off them, you know how many people would stop and really help them? 
I mean, really, if you saw someone collapse on the side of the road and you looked at them and they weighed 70 pounds and they were six foot tall, like, like we don't ever think, we, we, we don't imagine living by faith like everything's not going to be taken care of. You know what I mean? If you get laid off, even if bad things happen, there's some government program, there's something there out there, there's other people, there's, but, but, but really, living by faith is when you don't, it's things not seen. You don't see a way. The, the closest we come to living by faith is you tithing when you don't have the finances to tithe. Because you don't see how you're going to pay your bills. And that's biblical. And uh, that God says still tithe. That the, first, that God, the tithe is not whatever's left over, by the way. That's kind of how Americans tithe. That's not the biblical pattern. That tithe is the first fruits. The first thing that comes out is the tithe. Not the last. Not if you have it. The, the, the tithe is the Lord's. It's not yours. It's, it's God's. It automatically goes to God. The first tenth is God's of all your income. And so, but sometimes you tithe and you go, whoa, how am I going to pay the bills? And that's faith. Because you don't see how it's going to happen. Faith is the substance of the things hoped for. The word hope is much stronger in the Bible. It's an earnest expectation. It's something you're, you, you, you're excited about happening. The evidence of things that are not seen. You don't see it happening. You cannot see it. And that's faith. And we don't have to have that very often. We don't live by faith more often. But you have to have it. Matter of fact, with verse 6, it says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. It doesn't say it's really hard to please God without faith. It says it's impossible. Could it be possible that almost none of us are pleasing God? How are you living by faith right now? Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, I praise God, I live in a secure world, a very comfortable world, a world where, honestly, don't tell anybody, but there's been a lot of days I didn't even pray for my daily bread. <laughs> right? How many of you pray? How many of you, ready? We'll ask. How many of you every day pray for daily bread? Raise your hand. Couple? Okay. Why? Because you aren't in the third world wondering where your bread's going to come from, right? Matter of fact, some of us have too much daily bread. <laughs> some of us need to pray we'd have a little less daily bread. And you know what? And, and look, I've been, I've been in the utter poverty in, around the world and look and I think, how, how are they going to eat today? Me and one of the guys in Haiti this year, we, we sat there and talked to him, we said, we're, we're in Haiti where they sell the, the coal. They, 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 they take they, they take trees, cut them down, and they, they sell this coal, and everybody cooks with it because there's no power. And it's, it's so dirty and so poor in those areas. And we're looking at how much this coal costs, thinking, how do they sell enough of this stuff in a day? Because it's cheap to eat. And we're trying to figure that out. And I'm thinking, man, <laughs> some people don't know how they're going to get the daily bread, but, but we, we have our daily bread. I have food all over my cupboards. My lazy Susan broke because I had so, many, so much canned food in it because it was lazy, I guess. And, uh, and, and my lazy Susan broke. And then, you know what? I have food stored for, for emergencies, extra food. I have so much food in my house. And, and how do we live by faith? Usually, if you tell an American, God wants you to do this, and it's something bigger than them, they say, God doesn't want me to do that. There's no way I can do that. Because faith is such a foreign concept. Say, hey, you know what? Maybe God's calling to the mission field. No, God wouldn't do that. I can't. What would I do? Almost like a panic attack. Give me a Ritalin or give me a you know, Prozac, because I, I, you might have to step out and do something you're not comfortable with, you know, where everything isn't worked out. How do you live by faith? Because it's impossible to please God without faith. I think God is always pushing you, trying to get you to live by faith. But usually we think it cannot be God. God gives you things that are bigger than you. And we usually buckle and say, well, I just, I'm going to live with this the rest of my life being this way. Because we don't know what faith is. Faith is things not seen. It's believing to the point where you obey. When you do not see a way. I want to say, faith is not belief. <clears throat> a lot of people say, I have faith. 
because they believe. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe God's all-powerful. I believe the Bible is the Word of God. I have faith. No, you have belief. Okay? Faith and belief are two different things. Okay? Faith tells what it is. The substance of things hoped for. Uh, what it is. What, uh, the evidence of things not seen. That's what faith is. Uh, 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 belief just means you believe in something being real or not real. The Bible says in James 2, 2.19, it's James 2, uh, 2, 19, it says the devils also believe and tremble. The devils believe but don't have faith. The devil believes God's all-powerful. The devil believes that Jesus died and rose again. He saw it. But the devil's not going to heaven because he doesn't have faith and doesn't trust Christ to save him. So I'm not saying you don't have belief. So illustrate it this way. Story's been told. Uh, a man was a tightrope walker, and he put a tightrope across Niagara Falls. And then he went up there, and there's a crowd gathered. And he, was, he was not only going to walk across the tightrope, he was going to push a wheelbarrow across the tightrope. And he has a crowd there, and he, he gets everybody's attention. He says, all right, how many of you believe that I can walk across the, 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 this tightrope across Niagara Falls? Yay, I believe. He says, how many of you believe I can walk a wheelbarrow across it? And they said, ah. Yay! And they all raise their hand. And he says, How many of you will get in the wheelbarrow? Eh? <laughs> because they believed he could walk across with the wheelbarrow, but they didn't have faith enough to get in the wheelbarrow. Did they believe? Yeah. I would believe it too. Did they have faith enough to get in the wheelbarrow? I wouldn't either. <laughs> I'd volunteer somebody I didn't like. And, uh, but uh, why? Because, because faith and belief are two different things. You can say, I believe God can do anything. That's belief. Faith is when you step out and obey him when you don't see a way. Faith sees what's not seen. Faith, is, faith sees a way when there is no way. F everybody believed God could kill Goliath. David had faith enough to go into the valley. Faith makes you take an action. If you read through, the, this is the chapter of faith. If you read through Hebrews 11, it'll say, by faith, this person did this. Faith is when you believe enough to take an action that backs up what you say you believe. Okay? You can believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again and never have faith in him to save you. Okay, there's a lot of religious people who do that. I believe Jesus died for my sins and rose again, and I'm going to earn my way to heaven by being good. No, you have belief that Jesus died for your sins, but you don't have faith to trust him as Savior. You're trying to save yourself. You won't let go of that. You're trying to work, earn your salvation by good works because you don't have faith that God can save you. You have... You don't have faith enough to believe you can let go and let God save you and trust him completely. So you have work salvation. You haven't trusted him as Savior yet. You're the Savior. Because faith makes you let go and say, I'm trusting now, though I don't see. Noah said, I don't, I've never seen rain, but God says it's going to rain. Where's the wood? Thump, 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 thump. Faith was building the boat. <laughs> Okay, and we can show you this. Verse 4, by faith, Abel offered a sacrifice. By faith, Enoch was translated. By faith, Noah uh, was warned of God. Verse 8, by faith, Abraham left his country, which, which he had, and he obeyed, it says in verse 8. Uh, by faith, they did these actions. But verse 20, by faith, Isaac, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. Verse 21, by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both these other ones. Verse 22, by faith, Joseph made mention of his bones. Uh, by faith, no, Moses' parents uh, uh, built an ark and, and sent him out. By faith, Moses refused to be called, verse 24, a, a son of Pharaoh's daughter. Do you see every one of these, there's an action backing it up? So how do you live by faith? Because without faith, you cannot please God. God says, you don't trust me. 
and you got to show it by your actions. Let me give you some things we have faith in. It's seeing the unseen. Faith in the unseen. Seeing the unseen thing. And so I, I, I title this faith in the unseen or seeing the unseen thing. Being able to see by faith what God is going to do. And because you see what God can do, you step out and obey him. Number one, by faith, we see God is in control when you do not see God is in control. <laughs> That's faith. Faith sees that God is in control when we do not see how God is in control. Let's look at, let's go Hebrews here and uh, stay here. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 2. So I've had circumstances in my life in the last six months where everything just kind of went bleh. Okay, everything was just messed up and looked like I had, uh, I was, everything was just a disaster and I had no control of everything. Everything was going wrong. Everything is squirreling. And I had those circumstances. But thankfully I can say in those things, I said, God, you know what you're doing. You're in control. I trust you. And not get angry, curse God, quit serving God and everything else, but say, I don't see it, but God's in control. I don't see it, but God's greater than these messes. Faith sees it when he doesn't see it. Hebrews chapter 2 <clears throat> and verse 7, talking about Jesus, thou madest him a little lower than the angels and crowned him with the glory and honor and did set him over the work of thy hands. So the Bible says in the Old Testament, Jesus will be set over the work of God's hands, Psalms 8. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. You ready? So the Bible says, under the Messiah, under Jesus, God will put all things in subjection under Jesus. Are you ready? Do we see all things in subjection under Jesus? Is Washington, D.C., is Seattle under the subjection of Jesus? <laughs> no. Do you know anybody that's not under Jesus' subjection, under subjection of Jesus right now? You ever see, you know anybody that's just doing their own thing, not following Jesus? Yeah? And you know what? Hebrews acknowledges that. It says all things you need to put under subjection of Jesus' feet. Everything it says. All things it says. Uh, verse 8, it says, uh, He left nothing, middle verse, that is not put under him, so we don't, but now we see not yet all things put under him, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, should take that taste death for every man, for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things to bring this, uh, bringing unto bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. I, I, I want to read this whole rest of the chapter here. It's very important. Now, what's he saying here? He says, look, the Messiah has all things put under his feet. Psalms 8 says that. Psalms 2 says that. The Bible foresees that. It tells that in Isaiah 11 and, and all, over, all over the Bible. But right now, it's not the time. You know, he says, he says we see Jesus crucified. Putting, bringing many sons into heaven. You know what he says? He says, right now we don't see him over all things, but we know it's going to happen. But right now we see him as the one who saved us. He had to become a servant and suffer. We had to see the Isaiah 53 Jesus, but we know someday we'll see the Psalm 2 and the Psalm 8 Jesus. By faith we see that. But right now we see him just as the one who's saving us not bringing, the whole, bringing his kingdom into this world, which he will do. And watch how important it is that he did this first. Verse 14, For as much then as children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear and death uh, were all their lifetime subjected to bondage. For verily he took not upon him the form of an angel, but took upon him the seed of Abraham, He's saying, you know, he had to become a man to die for mankind. He had to become a man to suffer for sins. He had to become a man to destroy what the devil did and, and the curse that's on the world. And so he had to become a human. So that is part of it. You don't see everything put under him yet because he had to do this first. But see, 
He's still going to have all things put under him. He's still in charge. He's waiting his time. He is still in control. But right now, you don't see everything under him, but it's going to happen. See it. He had to do this first. There's a time frame. Look, your life might be in chaos right now, but if you'll continue to serve God, God can bring all things together for good to them who love God, to them who call according to his purpose. But if you do not have the faith to see him being able to do that, you will not be able to live by faith and continue on. And you might get bitter, you might get messed up, you might lose faith, you might quit, or all the things if you cannot see that it is going to happen. But it's not seen right now. That's faith. If it's seen right now, look, if it's seen right now, there's no faith. I can say, I have faith that on December, th or in December, on July 30th, we will be at church on Sunday morning at noon. I don't need faith. That that's what's happening right now. I can see that. I'm not prophesying, right? We're here. Okay. What you see doesn't demand faith, but God sometimes makes things be not seen. So he says, let's see if you keep on trusting when he can't see you. Because then you'll be able to please me because you trust me enough to have faith. I'll continue this passage. Verse 17, Wherefore all thing, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be made, uh, a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, uh, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Uh, for <clears throat> in that he himself also suffered, being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. And it's a big doctrine in the Bible that God was tempted at all points like we are, so he can comfort you and he understands. That's why what you need to do when you're suffering and hurting, you go to God and say, God, I'm feeling this. And God says, I know, you know what? That is hard. Let me help you. Because he says he can be a faithful high priest because he's, he's been tempted like you are. He suffered like you are. He became a human who felt pain and rejection and sorrow and pain and everything you feel. And so he's able as a God, not only to say, what are you talking about? I don't understand pain. I don't understand suffering. I don't understand loneliness. What are you talking about? He says, no, I get it. I was there. I came down and felt all those things that I suffered so I can help you. Later on, I'll get all things underneath me. That's no big deal. Right now, I want to save you and help you. And by faith, we say it's not time right now for, for the world to be under his feet, but it will be. And we, by faith, believe that. And revelation, everything in it is going to happen. Okay, and Psalms 8 is going to happen, and Psalm 2 is going to happen, and he that sits in heaven shall laugh, he shall have them in derision, and, and all the things that it says will happen are going to happen. We know that by faith, but you know what? Sometimes you have to accept that God's in control when you do not see God in control. You have to do that. 2 Timothy 1.12, But I know whom I believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Let me illustrate this to you. Travis, you want to grab that, that ladder there? <clears throat> so this week, I was uh, doing some electrical work. I'm not very good at electrical work. I'm better at a lot of things. I can, I'm okay. I, I do. Electrical work is hard to learn because you get shocked when you do it wrong. And, uh, but, uh, uh, and, uh, but I did some electrical work in the, in the ceiling this week, and so here I was. I was on this ladder, and uh, <clears throat> I had a microphone this up here. I was sitting up here, and I had two flashlights, and I was working there. And uh, I was climbing up here. I had the ceiling tile up, and I was working on these, uh, this strip of, uh, of uh, spotlights there. And so I was up there on the ladder. And I'd like, I like, every week I work with my hands because the Bible says a man should work with his hands. So I do it on purpose every week. And so this week I was moving those things and fixing that. And so I was working on that and I was up here with a drill and taking these things out and moving things around and adding electrical wires and doing a bunch of things. And so as I was doing that, <clears throat> I get, I get done and I got to reinstall this thing and I'd taken out five screws and I'm pretty consistent when I work on things. I don't know. Some of you are like this, you put things in the same spot when you work on things. Uh, I didn't used to be, but I learned it's a really bad idea not to put things in the same spot. And, and so I had, when I took the screws out, I had, I had taken my drills, zzz, 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 take them out, and I put them right here in this little circle right on top of this, this uh, ladder here. There's a little circle right there, and I put those screws in there. I said, okay. And so I, I did, got it all done, and I'm getting ready to put everything back in, and there's two screws there. Nobody else was here. 
It was me and God, and I had five screws there. And I looked around in the ground, and I looked everywhere. I lifted the white thing on this thing. I looked underneath every chair. I moved the chairs. I said, you ever said this? It has to be here. <laughs> and I said, it has to be here. I know it's here. So I said, not there. I, I got the flashlights out, and this one's brighter than the other one. And I took this flashlight, and I looked everywhere. And I'm, I looked. I, I, I thought, maybe I'm not seeing something. And so I thought, maybe I put some tools in the pulpit. I looked in the pulpit. I thought maybe it's underneath there. I took everything here. I put all these things here. I put everything onto the pulpit. I climbed back up on here. Not there. I shake the thing. Not on there. It has to be here. It has to be. Screws don't fly. Okay, there's no holes in the ground. It's concrete floor underneath this carpet. You ever said this? It has to be. It's here. But I thought maybe I went and I put it up in the ceiling. I, I took them off and put it up in the edge. I didn't think I did, so I crawled up, popped ceiling tiles out, felt everywhere around there, stuck my head up in there with the wonderful insulation, and shined my flashlight everywhere. Nowhere. So you ever just stop and just step back? They have to be here. They have to be. I'm looking, could it have fallen on the cross here and be balanced on the edge? I'm thinking, and I said, I don't want to try to, I don't have the screws anyway. I can't even match them. I don't want to go to Lowe's and buy a bunch of screws and try to do this. Uh, I got things to do. And I, so I sat there. Now, wait a minute. <clears throat> I knew they were here. I knew I'd set them all in that circle right there. I knew it. I remember doing it. But they weren't there. But I knew I put him there. <laughs> so I said, they're here, though I don't see them. And I stopped and I just thought, what am I missing here? And then I said, you know what? I got to fix this thing. They have to be here. I believe they're here. Because I know I haven't gone anywhere. They cannot roll out of the room. Okay, they're here. So I started all over again. I said, all right, let me start completely over. <clears throat> all my tools are in the pulpit. And I went over the pulpit and I lifted it up and I said, is it here? There is a magnet flash at the back of my flashlight. And I'd put my flashlight right on top of those things and then put it over here. Wait a minute. <clears throat> Can I see it? No. But I was missing something. Right? <clears throat> but because I absolutely knew, though I couldn't see it, they're here. I put them in that circle. I know I put them in that circle. That's what I do when I'm in a ladder. I put them on top of the ladder in the little spot they have there for, for things like that. That's what I do. I knew that. So I wasn't going to say, <clears throat> well, I guess they're not here. I guess they're gone. It was impossible they were gone. Nobody was here but me. That is, there's no hill. Screws don't roll out of the room. There's no hole in the floor. They have to be here. Do you understand? And so I said, I'm going to find them. I'm missing something. Let me check again. And I stuck with it. Okay, you can put the ladder away. What's the point of that? <clears throat> point of that is this. There come signs in my life where I don't understand God. I don't see God. I don't understand what God's doing. God's not answering my prayer for this. This thing looks like it's not fair. But I know God. I know whom I believed and I'm persuaded that he is able. God never changes. God is good. I don't see it. But God must be doing something good here. God must be in control. I'm not going to leave. 
I'm not going to leave God because I don't understand. Job said this in Job 14 very clearly. He says, I look at my right hand and God is not there. I look at my left hand. Behold, he's not there. I look behind me and I cannot perceive him. I look in front of me. I cannot find him. But I know. I know who he is. And I know when he hath tried me, I should come forth as gold. I'm not going to quit serving God and go away because I can't see. I'm going to have this thing called faith that's going to make me keep on going for God when I don't see the way when I, because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Can I tell you this? God was good before I was born. God was good a billion years ago. God will be good in a billion years. You know what? God's a good God. I might not always be able to see everything. I never even thought of that. Do you realize you might be missing something in your mind when you're thinking God isn't fair? If me in a little realm between a ladder right there and this pulpit right here can't find these things and miss this, you say, I wouldn't have missed that. Well, you're smarter than me. But are you so arrogant that you think because you're having some troubles in your life and you don't see God in it, God is no longer good and you might not be missing something? Faith believes God's in control when they don't see God in control. Faith can endure those times that Job endured when they can't see God. There is times where the psalmist over and over says, Why standest thou far off, O God? Why hidest thy face from me? When you don't see, but faith says, I know who God is. If the person you trusted the most in your entire life went and took your credit card, you would say, I wonder why they did that, not they're ripping me off. Because you know who they are. Right? And you say, I wonder why they took that. Not, they must be robbing from me. No, you know who they are, so they must be doing the right thing. I don't see it and understand it, but I'm going to keep on trusting. Faith says, I trust them. I have faith in them that they're going to do the right thing, though I don't know why they did it. And faith keeps you serving God in those times of your life that you're going to have when you are being tried and you're not going to see God. You're not going to understand why God's not answering that prayer. You're not going to see how that thing's going to work. And you don't see any way for it to work out. And God's forgotten your name. It seems like faith will keep you going in those times because you see God is in control when you don't see how God's in control. You see God's good when you don't see God is good. And so me and my life and having some trials and troubles this year and going through some things, I've been through enough of those now that I've realized before. You say, oh God, this isn't fair. You, don't you know? And all the things that we do when we don't know faith. I just said, God, I don't understand this. What are you doing? But you know what you're doing. I'll trust you. I'm not going to curse you. I'm not going to quit. In the end, what you do is go, oh, that's what you do. That's what you do in the end. When you get to the trial and through the end, you kind of say, oh, that's okay. That's what God was doing. Sometimes that end, unfortunately, a few times it is until heaven. You know what? You just trust God. I know my God's good. I know whom I believed. I know what God is like. I trust him. I'm going to keep on serving him. I'm going to see God's in control, but I don't see him as in control. I might be missing something. Don't be an arrogant human who thinks you can't miss something. We're so arrogant. You might be missing something. Number two, how we doing? We all right? You check that, uh, that, that thing. I, I, didn't, I didn't adjust it after, after Sunday school. Make sure it's, it's on still because nobody's saying anything. They're very quiet, and I don't know if they're alive. It's been a fine funeral we've had today. And uh, first thing, uh, we see God's in control when he, uh, we do not see him in control. Number two, faith sees obedience as necessary even when they doubt the outcome. <laughs> faith sees obedience as necessary even when they d doubt the outcome. <laughs> and Luke 5.5 5. The fishermen have been fishing all night. The carpenter walks up to them and says, hey, go out and cast your nets out on the side for a, a massive uh, 
a, 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 a bunch of fish for a draught. And he said, sir, we've toiled all night and fished all night. We haven't caught a single fish. Nevertheless, at thy word, we'll do it. He, they say in Luke 5, 5. The carpenter is giving fishing advice to fishermen who fish all night and haven't caught a single fish. And they said, look, we've fished all night. We haven't caught anything. Nevertheless, at thy word. Nevertheless, at thy word, we'll do it. <laughs> Did you know that sometimes God says, do something and it seems like it's not going to work? It seems like I shouldn't do that. But faith obeys when they, do, when they doubt the outcome. I've had to do this so many times in my life where I've said, Lord, that's not going to work. But you're telling me to do it. I'll do it. And you know what? They caught so many fish that their nets started breaking and ships started sinking. I remember years and years ago, I was coming up to... <clears throat> Easter Sunday, and and and, uh, and 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 God just started working my heart and says, I don't want you to prepare a message for Easter Sunday. I said, okay. And uh, so I said, well, you know, I preach enough times and enough circumstances, and, you know, I can get in a passage and not have any notes and preach, and nobody knows my notes anyway, and, and my notes, I never go by them anyway, so it's no big deal. I won't have any notes. And as it got closer, God said, no, I don't, I, I don't want you to have a text. I don't want you to even think about what you're going to preach. I said, how about we do that Thursday night that's not Easter morning? And he said, no, don't prepare anything. I said, Lord, like not even think about, think it through my mind. He said, no, nothing. Nothing. Uh, clear as day. And I'm not. I'm not spooky. I'm not this, you know, an angel told me to go and buy Pizza Hut today. You know, I'm not, I'm not that, you know. I don't, I don't do that kind of thing. And, and, and <clears throat> so I did it. I remember sitting, sitting in a chair over there, last song singing, and I thought, this is going to be interesting because I have no idea what I'm going to say. And we had literally the biggest day in the history of our church. People came from who knows where, everywhere, to hear I don't know what. And I mean, packed out. And I had no idea what I was going to say. And I can tell you, that's disconcerting. Okay? And I literally, I went, sitting there, thinking, this could be interesting. And I get up there, and out of the words came out, uh, turn in your Bible to Luke 21. And it just came out of my mouth. I said, okay, at least I got a passage. I wonder what that's about. And uh, you know that that morning, God poured out His Spirit. We had people bawling out to God at the altar. It was we had I, we had a bunch of adults saying, and God just worked. I'm just glad I didn't say some chapter that wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Mark four, Mark, Mark uh, 24. Uh, but uh, and uh, you know, I, but you know, God worked it out because I obeyed when it didn't look like it was going to turn out well. You know, I started this church. I got to the point where I believed it was never going to get going. I mean, nobody was coming. And when anybody came, nobody else was there. Can I tell you, when one person comes to a service and is one person and the pastor in service, they don't come back. They don't sing. Try to lead a song service with you and one person. Or two people. That's what we had nobody coming most of the time. And then a visitor would come. And the visitor would sit there and go, where is everybody? Oh, uh, well, just, uh, you know, Jesus is here, you know. And uh, and they were uncomfortable and squirming. And what do you preach? You know, who do you preach to? You know, I mean, what do you say? You know, and, and, and some of you are living in fornication. You know, I mean, there's one person out there. I mean, what do you do? I mean, how do you preach? And they don't want to sing with you. It's a mess. You ever tried singing with two people? Okay. No musical instrument, nothing. And you know what? I've, I, I'd, I'd go, and God didn't, and I said, Lord, what am I doing? This is not going to ever go. And God didn't tell me anything. He told me to go and start a church, and so we kept on going. And I thought, when they come, I'm going to invite people. They're not going to like it when they come. But I kept on going when I doubted the un outcome. And, 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 and it turned out okay. It turned out okay. 
Why? Because obedience obeys when they doubt the outcome. How many times have I told somebody, you need to do this thing here? I said, I don't think it'll work. What you're doing is not working. Try it. Maybe God's involved in this. Try it. Faith says, I'm going to try this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to obey when I doubt the outcome. Nevertheless, of thy word. Faith sees the unseen. Next, faith sees the rewards of suffering uh, in eternity. Let's go back to Matthew 5. Faith sees that the suffering is worth it. Faith sees the rewards of eternity, even though right now all you see is persecution or suffering or trials. But faith sees the rewards in eternity of suffering. Matthew 5 and verse 7. Ble- uh, or, sorry, verse, uh, verse 2. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you, and say all men are people against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. You see that? It doesn't just say endure it. Oh, they're, they're spitting on me and they're yelling at me and they're making fun of me. Oh, I'm going to make it and get to heaven. It doesn't say, it says rejoice and be exceedingly glad. In Acts 5, it says they let the council rejoice and they're counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. It means say, you know what? Woo! They just mocked me for being a Christian. I just got some treasures in heaven. That's faith. Faith doesn't see their treasures. Faith doesn't see the reward. The Bible says, great is your reward in heaven and somebody persecutes you. It means they just racked up treasure. Imagine if your boss says, look, every time somebody at work says something negative about you or gives you a dirty look, I have cameras everywhere, I'm going to give you a $1,000 bonus. You're at work and all it says, I'm going to give you a dirty look. Yes. All right. I'd start offending people on purpose. I mean... And can you imagine how at the end of the day, if you got 14 people who are nasty to you, you just got $1,400 extra dollars in your paycheck? You know how happy you'd be at work? Whenever, when somebody's nasty to you, you say, man, go ahead and be grumpy all you want. You know what? You just got me. And that's what persecution is. Whenever you suffer anything, Jesus says, no man has suffered anything, doesn't seem a hundredfold in heaven. The rewards are incredible. When you get up and you're tired, I want to go to church and I'm so tired, I don't feel like it. And you go, I'm going anyway because I love Jesus. And the suffering you go through, this is American suffering, to get up and go to church, you don't feel like it. You get a hundredfold of that. Every bit of suffering you get is faith says, I'm going to rejoice in this because I get reward for suffering. Oh, let's look at verse uh, chapter 16 of Matthew. Chapter 16, and Christians go around all grumpy. Poor me. The Bible says rejoice, be of good cheer, all these things. Matthew 16 and verse uh, 24, he said unto the disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what does a man profit if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Can I tell you, I thought I was, I was really, really, when I, when I gave up my life, when I was, uh, oh, I'd say I surrendered my life to God, somewhere 16, 17 years old. When I gave my life to God and God called me to preach, to be a preacher, and I said, okay, and all those things happened. You know what? I gave up all my plans, all my dreams. I could have ended up in Timbuktu. Wherever God had sent me, I'd have went. My plans, my dreams, who I was going to marry, what I was going to do with my life, all those things were God's now. He, he, got, the, he got the steering wheel. Did you know, <laughs> I, if I would have listened to the way people talk now and, and Christians talk about sacrifice, oh, God wouldn't want you to do that. God didn't sign up for that. God didn't want you to suffer. I would have never done that. I would have thought, oh, poor me. Do you know, look, <laughs> I threw away a greasy old cheeseburger and got the best steak and in Seattle's best steakhouse. <laughs> now in an eternity, you, you lose things for God. You don't lose anything. 
When you suffer for God, you don't suffer. Yes, you suffer for a minute, but he puts your tears in the bottle, Psalm says, and in heaven you get great reward. And faith says, you know what? I'm suffering right now for the cause of Christ. I'm suffering in my Christian life, but you know what? I'm going to keep doing right because I'm getting great rewards in heaven. And faith keeps on going. And faith stays happy because they know that those who mourn are going to be comforted. And that God rewards our sorrow with, tear, with, uh, with, with, with joy in heaven. Next, i got to finish quickly. Faith sees Jesus enough to love him. 1 Peter chapter 4, 1. 1 Peter 1. <clears throat> I've never seen Jesus physically. Never seen him. I've met people who said they've seen him. Maybe they did. I, I always go by what the Bible says. In the Bible, when they saw Jesus, they reacted a certain way. They fell on their faces dead. And says, woe is me, for I am unclean. That's generally the reaction when you saw God. Okay? Um, but, okay. I've never seen him. Most people have never seen him. Okay? I've seen some weird things in the spiritual realm. I've never seen Jesus. But you know what? Faith sees Jesus. Verse, uh, 1 Peter 1, verse 8. Whom having not seen, ye love. Talk about Jesus, of course. End of verse 7. And the glory of the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love, in whom though now you see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Never seen Jesus physically, but I've met Jesus. I know Jesus. I've seen him. Now, I've not seen him physically but I've seen him in my life all over the place. I've seen him enough to love him and faith sees Jesus and what he's like and sees him in your life and sees him in the scripture and sees him in experience enough that you love God. You don't have to physically see him. That's faith. Faith says, you know, I've never met Jesus, but I've met Jesus. <laughs> I've never seen him, but you ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. I know God. I know, I love him. That's faith. Hey, I'm living, look, our lives, we're living by faith. We're living, you're in church this morning because you believe in something unseen. Or you'd still be sleeping. Okay, or, or well, some of you are, but I mean, you'd be sleeping at home. Um, but uh, but you, you, you would be because you would, you would, but you believe in something unseen. Faith sees the unseen enough to love God. Lastly, no, it's not. I got to finish quickly. Faith sees salvation. Faith sees an end of this message. Faith sees salvation not by works, though it is not naturally what they think. This is very important. Old bunch of people, how are you getting to heaven? I'm living a good life, being a good person. That's what man sees. I need to take actions to get to God, to please him, to get to heaven. I'm going to get to heaven by being good. That's what I see. That is not Bible salvation. For by grace he is saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy hath he saved us. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Faith makes me say, Jesus died for my sin. He is the way, the truth, and the life. I'm trusting him to save me. I cannot work my way to heaven. I'm a sinner. But people who don't have faith say, I've got to do it. I've got to earn it. I've got to do it. And that's what the flesh says. That's something tangible. I can see my good works. I can believe that I'm good enough. I can trust myself and me doing good to get to heaven. Faith says, wages of sin is death. There's none righteous. No, not one. I'm not righteous. I can't save myself, but I'm going to trust Jesus. And you know what? Faith says I'm 100% sure of heaven because Jesus died for all my sins and said, it is finished and I'm trusting his work on the cross. And faith rests in Christ, not works for salvation. Do you believe Jesus can save you? Do you believe when he died on the cross and said, it is finished, that he finished and died for all of your sins? Or do you think you need to keep on earning it because you don't have faith in his ability to save you? Believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know you have eternal life, not work. Faith believes Jesus can save you and you don't need to earn it 
It's a faith-based salvation, not a works-based salvation. And somewhere in your life, you've got to pick, am I going to earn it or is Jesus going to save me? And that determines whether you go to heaven or hell. Because if you're earning it, God's going to look at your righteousness and say, you know what? You're not righteous. You have sin. You're not perfect. Because you did 100 good things and 99 bad things did not mean you're going to heaven. One bad thing means hell. The wage of sin is death. So you better come by faith and quit looking by your sight and saying, I've got to do it the way I think and my actions are going to save me. I've got to go by faith and trust Christ to save me. Last of all, faith believes the Lord will make, uh, that you will make it victoriously in the end through the Lord. Psalm chapter 42, and I'm going to finish up here. <clears throat> Psalm 42. Faith, though it doesn't see how, it believes because of the power of God that in the end you're going to get the victory. Psalm 42. And verse 6, oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. This is depression, by the way. He's talking about depression in the next few chapters. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember thee from the land of Jordan and from uh, uh, and of the Hermonites and from Mizar. Deep, de uh, deep calleth in the deep, and the noise of thy water spouts. All the waves, now they, all thy billows are gone over me. He says, I am underwater. I am in depression. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in, in the night, his song will be with me. And the prayer, uh, my prayer unto the God of my life. He says, you know what? I'm depressed. I am overwhelmed. But God's going to give me a song and I'm going to make it. Look at verse 11. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Why am I depressed? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. Who is thy health of my countenance and my God? He just said it again. He said it before in verse 8. God's going to command his loving kindness. He's going to give me a song. And he says, I don't know why I'm depressed, because I will praise God in the future. Verse 40, chapter 43 does the same thing. Verse 2, thou art my God and my strength. Why dost thou cast me off? God, you've cast me off. Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Oh, send out thy light of thy truth and let them lead me. Let them bring me into thy holy hill, into thy tabernacle. Then will I go into the altar of God, unto, uh, unto God my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O God. My God, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. Where this messed up society, they tell you if you if you're depressed, you're messed up. There's something wrong with you. You're depressed. No, depression's part of life. You're gonna go through seasons. We're going. Why am I? Sometimes he said, "Why, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? You don't even know why you're depressed. Things can be going fine, and you go into depression sometimes." That doesn't mean you're messed up. It means you're human. It means you have chemicals all over in your body that do all kinds of funny things. It means that you were doing fine until one person said one thing and you went to spin it off. You know what? If you have God, you make it. You know what happens? When I get depressed, I say, oh, I'm depressed. wonder why. I'll get out of this. God's going to help me through it. i got to keep on going. And you get, you do this thing. Ready? It's called, you tough it out. There's an old ancient word called toughness that is not spoken in our language anymore. Oh, what am I going to do? Oh, no, my VCR broke. My DVD broke. I can't make it today. Tough it out. Everybody says, oh, I'm having a hard time. I can't make it. You don't have a choice. Your kids need you. You got to make it. Somebody needs you. Tough it out. You're going to go through a season. You'll make it with God. Faith believes that I shall yet praise him. He just does it. Faith believes I don't see a way out. I don't know why I'm even depressed. I don't know how to get out of this depression. But I have a great God who will get me out of this thing someday. Okay? Faith does that. It doesn't say faith is out of the depression. Faith just says I... He's still depressed. Why art thou cast down on my soul? Still depressed. But you know what? I show you how to praise him. I'll be okay. 
I'll make it. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why. Sometimes in life you just go, I don't know what's going on. I can't get a break. I can't figure this out. I don't have an answer. I don't know what to do. You know what you do? You say, I got a good God. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to make it. That's faith. When you don't have faith, you say, oh, I'm not, there's no hope. God, God's against me. Everything's bad. Nothing's going to ever work out because you lost faith. Faith doesn't even see the way. Faith just knows who God is. Okay. If I had, if I had a problem with whatever your skill set is, I'm finishing up here. I go and I have a flooring problem and I can't see any way to fix my floor. I've got a, a, a bunch of crooked concrete and I got ripped, half ripped up carpet and I don't see any way you can attach carpet to this floor and everything else. I can't see the way, right? I don't know the way. I don't know how to do that. But I go to Derek and Derek has been doing, how long have you been doing carpet flooring? 23 years. He probably dealt with most every weird kind of problem. And I just called Derek and said, Derek, I don't see any way to fix this thing. You know what? You've probably done this 10 times. And he comes to me and says, you know what? I can handle it. That's faster. You, you stick with preaching. You know what you're doing there. <laughs> you know, even though I don't see the way, I have faith that he can do it. Right? You ever had a car broke where you can't figure it out, in the mecha- but you, the mechanic can? Do you think that might work with God? I don't know what to do, God, but you've been fixing lives for 6,000 years. You've kind of seen everything, and you're God. I don't know how to, I don't see the way, but I'm going to trust you to do this. That's faith. Faith doesn't see, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I believe God. <laughs> and so I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to work out, but I have faith in the, I don't have to see it because I know who I'm, I know who's in charge of it. 